Declan Fanning wears five, while Porik Marr starts at left half. In the middle is a man who has rediscovered his form this summer, centre-back Conor O'Mahony. The return of Shane McGrath to his best position at centre field has been vital, as Tipperary travelled through the qualifiers to reach their destination here at Croke Park. Beside him is a player of truly enormous potential, Boris Elise Brendan Maher. There's been much debate, criticism and even concern in Tipperary about the composition of their half-forward line. In Garode Ryan, Patrick Maher and the returning John O'Brien, the Tipperary management seem to have found the right formula and balance. If you ask, where is the Tipperary going to win this particular match, then here's your answer. There is no better inside line in the country, apart of course from Kilkenny, than Noel McGrath, Owen Kelly and Lara Corbett. If the ball is left in fast to these guys, Waterford could have at least three major problems. Well, they might have, um, you know, the Tipperary up front are very, very good, but I think they'll have a little bit of concern maybe about over their full back line against Galway. And uh, I think that one of the main men is Paul Curran today. And I think that uh, Waterford will probably play young um, O'Halloran in on him and try and run him about the place. But, um, you know, Paul Curran is a very, very experienced player and I'm expecting a big game from him. He has plenty of pace, he has plenty of experience, and I think that he'll show up to the defence today. Well, Tipperary and Waterford have met 38 times. Tipperary won 27, Waterford 10. Only one draw back in 1933. I wonder, could it happen again today? Michael. That remains to be seen. Marty Morrissey, back to Marty and to Donald uh, shortly. Gentlemen, if this is going to be the tight game that we expect that it is going to be, then obviously a lot of the player on the middle of the field will be crucial. Now, we've talked about Brick Walsh, the centre-back down in Waterford team, but also Shane O'Sullivan at midfield, the Valley Gunner man. Sure. Yes, in the, in the right place. But you know, a lot has been made about the changes in, in Tipperary team. But Tipperary are the very same personnel in defence and in midfield as they had against Cork. Brendan Maher and Shane McGrath have formed a great midfield partnership. Now, if if Waterford had to break even, even break even here at, at midfield, this man is going to be vital, Shane O'Sullivan. He's a he, he has been a phenomenal in phenomenal form this year. A very good year. Both in yeah. linking up with, with uh, the, the defence with, with, with the forwards, in winning hard ball in the middle of the field, and in scoring. Mm. You know, so he's he's in top form, but he will need to be in the, today because there'll be a massive battle today. It'll be very crowded between the two 50-yard lines. There'll be a huge battle there, and the one attribute he will need is to be able to win that hard ball. You know, all the crowd in this air come out like your kiddie lads do, win the ball and deliver it into the forward line. And of course, we've been talking about there's so much speculation of the role that this sub that they've brought on late into the game, Brian O'Halloran, for Waterford, is going to make. As they said in the commentary there, young lad waiting for his leaving search results. We wish him well, but today is another big test. Yeah, like everyone's wondering where he's going to play, but no one fits, he'd give him a kind of a running role. He's coming in from playing centre forward last year, and a very good Waterford minor team last year. Now, he, they've been talked about him and Walter all year that he's so good at playing so well and he was introduced against Cork scored a point and didn't take it off it's a big ask from today but you'll probably find that as Jerry said he'd come from deep and use his skill and kind of pace but it's still a big ask because the tip backs goalie and midfielder are the exact same and I don't expect tip to move out today like Cork did against Walter they'll hold back as well mm -hmm. and there will be a lot of crowd in the midfield it's going to be a hard one but I could be interested to see where he plays and how he does and like, we'd like to wish him well because it is a very very big ask for a young fella oh, There's no doubt about that uh, we looked at Stephen Malunfi a little bit earlier on Ger. Uh, um, no, the man who's going to have his jersey in his face all day. Yes, without a doubt. And Malumphy's been, been so industrious, such a hard worker, moving all over the field. Is a man going to hold the centre or is he going to follow him? You know, he hasn't been in the greatest form this no. year. In fact, I think Parik Maher is a much better... He's an out-and-out -out central player. Right? Well, I don't know, well, I don't that, know that, why... That could be a decision that yeah. could be made very, very quickly because yeah. Conor Manny was taken uh, off against Cork in, in the most championship match. Not yeah. back to the form that no, we've seen as no, a central no. position. And you're not yeah. number six, you want your best man command in there. So, I mean, it is a, a switch that... Uh, and most, as well no? as that, Maher seems to be as an out-and-out -out central yeah, so man. Yeah. You know, yeah. the ball, win yeah. the ball. He yeah. was brilliant to get there against mm. there in and But Homehani is a good cover on him. He's true. Both sides is very good to cover Big day, man, he's good. Big day, he's good. The big day. Yeah. And the other big question, Owen Kelly, carry a little bit of a back injury, you know? Yeah, I mean, all the speculation all week was that Owen Kelly had suffered a back injury that he's had over, that has played him over the last couple of seasons, and like he's captain of the team, big undertaking for him at, at the edge of the square today, and that like himself and Noel McGrath maybe need certainly need to beat up the performance considerably, yeah. you know. And I mean, um, you're talking about back injuries, Michael. I mean, does the man alongside me? I thought <laughs> all the speculations <laughs> about <laughs> Owen Kelly this week. Was it rolling in the hair? No, or it was, was it is rolling in the hair or bailing here? You are certainly, is it? You know, so, um, I mean, if you're rolling in the hair, you're a better man than I thought, so I must say. You know, All right, but, that's but, but it's, we're, it's, we're it's we're on Kelly as well. It's yes. A, not, not a great monster final. Could have won it in normal time. He's a Crow Park player. He strikes, he, oh, yeah. he plays very well in Crow Park. So, and you know, he's on a new guy, Liam Lawler. Exactly. It's very vital. Old Kelly could 
beat Liam Lawler. That's a big, big tussle. Almost time for the action. Very, very quick pr prediction. Who's going to win, Cyril? I expect Tip just to get through. Tip, Cyril? Yeah, I'll go with Tip as well. Two tips. Listen, it's a class of a kind, Mike. Between these two. The only thing I'll say, Tip played their best hurling in Crow Park. Waterford have yet to play their best hurling in Crow Park. On that basis, I go for Tip. Okay. Here's hoping for a cracking hurling game. Let's join Marty Morrissey and Donald O'Grady. Thank you very much, Michael. It's been an interesting journey for both Tipperary and Waterford. For the Premier County, the scenic route has taken 11 weeks and three impressive victories since they were humbled on the banks of the Lee by 10 points. Since then, Tipperary have dished out P45s to Wexford, Offaly and Galway and are now 70 minutes away from having another crack at Kilkenny and try to stop the glorious drive for five by the Cats. For Waterford, winning their ninth Munster title was massive, but they want and need the big one. To win the All Ireland the direct route, they're already 50% there, having said hello and goodbye to Clare and Cork. Only Tipperary and Kilkenny stand in their way, and that's some challenge. Watching, observing, analysing is Kilkenny manager Brian Cody. They're watching our pictures, Sunday Game Live all over the world. Lyde O'Shea and Sean Martin, nephews of the Tipperary coach Eamon O'Shea, are watching the match together in McIntyre's Club in Cleveland, Ohio. Brian Lottie says hello from Sydney, Australia. Former Cork footballer, teacher in Yawn. He's watching his two past pupils, Clinton Hennessy and Brian O'Holloran, who's watching, of course, for his leaving set results on Wednesday. And hello as well to Brian Fitzgibbon and Anne Marie Minot from Nina Ballina, County Tipperary, who got married yesterday. Unable to be here, but watching him on the big screen in Killaloo. Same too for Ali Killian and Sinead Breslin, who got married yesterday in Ross's Point. It's all happening in Croke Park as we await, of course, this All Ireland semi final and who's going to play in the All Ireland final against Kilkenny. There is no more backdoor. This is do or die. This is about passion, belief, skill, and fulfilling a dream for every player, but also in these recessionary times uplifting the spirits of the people of Tipperary and Waterford. Will it be Waterford or Tipperary that will return on the first Sunday in September to face Kilkenny in the All-Ireland Final of 2010? Let's find out. John O'Grady, your thoughts and predictions. Well, it's going to be very uh, interesting in the first 10 minutes, Martin, because two years ago, the same teams met at the same stage and, um, you know, Tip had a battle in their hands after 10 minutes and they failed that battle, so they'll be well up for it today and I'm expecting Noel McGrath maybe to operate around the centre forward to try and run up Rick Walsh. Here in Croke Park, Aron O'Brien, played by the St. Michael's Scout Band from Inner Skillen in County Fermanagh. and excitement around Croke Park. I haven't seen it over the last couple of weekends, to be honest, but there is a buzz. Match referee this afternoon is John Sexton, native of uh, Brewery, County Limerick, but now 